Hi everyone, Rainy Bastarash with my dream boat project and I'd like to welcome you all here today. This is our first, <laughs> first live stream, uh, at least I think it was. Uh, it's the first live stream uh, with this page. As most of you know, I, we have several other YouTube channels for my, for my day job and we go live quite often there. But anyway, I want to thank you all for being here and uh, I've got some great information to share. First of all, for those of you that have seen my uh, YouTube channel, you know my goals, uh, one of my goals, a couple different videos we put out was to have a 100% solar powered yacht okay for my next build right now i'm building my puddle jumper and uh, so my dream boat project is while i'm building this boat looking around to find my dream build or my dream boat uh, that my wife and i raluca can uh, go traveling all around with you know having fun living the dream going on the great loop and fishing and sharing videos with all you folks not only during the build but after on we're thinking wow, wouldn't it be great to have a solar-powered one? So we'd been looking into it, and I had all my different ideas, and of course, I'm new to this. So far, I've built, uh, what, a 15-foot uh, pontoon sailing canoe. <laughs> uh, so, so far, I've built that, and I'm building this 18-foot puddle jumper right now. And so we're getting the experience, but I'm still new to the field. What can be done with solar and all the different things and the batteries and da, da, da. and a lot of you folks have been giving me advice actually been asking me questions to ask Sam Devlin now Sam Devlin from Devlin Designs I was supposed to have a video interview with him in January and guess what I did speak to him in January and I asked him for the interview and he said sure and so uh, a few days later he said hey why don't you give me a call he says, I'd like to chat with you. So I said, oh, this sounds good. So I called, it was, I think, right around mid-month. We must have spent close to an hour. Uh, great guy, very nice guy to speak to. Uh, if you want to do business with him and you want service and you want someone that really knows his <coughs> stuff, okay, uh, that's him. So anyways, I called and spoke to him, and wow, he was prepared. <laughs> shocked me he says well i went on to your site your channel he says and i looked at your videos i know what your criteria is what you're looking for uh in a solar powered diy you know boat build he goes and i thought it was a great idea to speak to you first before you just had me online and asked me all these questions and and i'm, I'm glad i did too because the answers i got weren't what i expected uh, because if we were doing this as a live video, you'd be hearing, well, you can't really do that yet. Well, you can't really do that yet. So bottom line, to make a short story long, all the things or most of the things that I want to do, what I want in this solar powered boat, okay, me wanting everything. Of course you do. It's, it's your dream boat. They probably can be done, but not right now. Technology isn't really there yet. So, uh, but we had a great conversation and I want to go over and tell you some of the things we spoke about and some of the things we found out. And afterwards, I want to tell you, uh, we do have a slightly new direction as a result. So Sam helped me to get my thoughts in order. It's great to have someone like that to, uh, to be able to use as a sounding board. Someone, I guess you could say, uh, what would that be? A mentor. Okay. Because like I said, he's like the biggest guy out there. And uh, so it's helped me to have a new direction. So I'm going to chat with you a little bit about that, a bit, a bit, a bit, and just break it in a new tongue. <laughs> and uh, then if whoever's on, if you folks have any questions or comments, I'd love to chat with you. That's the whole idea for this live thing. I just want to meet you, you, you all the scallywags out there and chat and find out what kind of bills you're doing. Uh, if you've built a boat, are building a boat, what you've built. Matter of fact, I'd like to chat with some of you folks and I will eventually online to find out what you're building to show everyone out there the different options. You know, besides my puddle jumper, I know that some of you are building uh, the Tolman boats and some of you are building, uh, you know, oh, what was it? A good friend of mine was building a Tango, the Tango 18 and different boats like that. Let me know what you're building. I'd love to hear about it. And we could probably chat online and find out, you know, the the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> and, oh, my shirt. Okay, everybody's going to probably ask me over that. It is real cool Pepe. 
And for those of you that aren't French like me, up in north northeastern Maine, Pepe means granddad. So real, really real, okay, real. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. If anybody's here, by the way, already, go ahead and let me know who you are, where you're from. I'd like to see how far I'm getting people from. Uh, it'd be cool to see if I have anybody that's actually on a boat to listen, uh, watching us. That'd be cool too. So go ahead and leave in the comments where you are, what you're. Uh, <laughs> where you are, who you're from, no, who you are. It's funny how when you word, word those things differently, how they have a different meaning. Who you are and where you're from. All right, so let's talk about the, the chat with Sam. Okay, so first of all, like I said, I found that not only is he extremely knowledgeable, he's a quite pleasant guy to speak with, so we had a good time. Um, he gave me a lot of good ideas, but see, one of the things... Uh, well, let's start out. First question I asked him was, we were talking about the boat, since he said he read my criteria, so he knew what I was looking for, and of course, I wanted a solar boat that can go a little faster than 8 miles an hour, and you know, I wanted something that would be nice if it can go like 10, 15 miles an hour, and first of all, the speed isn't available right now, especially for the size boat that I want. I guess I was looking at things a little different. I need to research an awful lot more about solar. Okay, and what it can do. So, uh, first of all, I'm not really going to be able to get the speed I want out of a boat. But again, you know, they're they're designed to go you know slower so you can enjoy yourself anyway. Then we started speaking about hulls. Okay, uh, the displacement hull and semi-displacement hull and uh, all the different you know catamarans and stuff like this. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of get a little confused with that because just from speaking to a lot of folks on here, some of them are telling me, well, you know, why get a displacement hull? Why not get a semi-displacement hull and you'll be able to go faster? And uh, Sam kind of mentioned, well, you want to look into hulls, understand them a little better. And with a solar boat, you really want to have a displacement hull. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do a lot more research on that. Uh, but... I guess, you know, a lot, a lot of things have to do when you're dealing with solar. You need to look at the length of the hull, the weight of it. So there's an awful lot more than just, you know, V, deep V. I've been hearing all this great thing about deep V, and I think uh, I was probably listening to the wrong people. <laughs> Got to use my own mind, okay? Deep V is not the only good thing to go out in the ocean with. There's other boats, uh, uh, other hulls that can handle it well as well. So we spoke of the width of my proposed craft. And of course, I was looking for something that was trailerable, but the maximum trailerable with a permit. To me, I was looking for something in the oh, 10, 11 foot range. I think it can go 11, 6 with a small $25 permit here anywhere in the state. And different states have different ruling. Well, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> You must have caught a fish. The wider the boat, the more power you need and the more drag there is. So like you were saying, you can want to get something a little bit more narrow. Well, I'm not a real narrow person. Ta-da! Okay. I want I wanted a wider boat. The wider the better because I could have more room. And of course, this is going to be, a, especially if I'm taking the going on the Great Loop, it's going to be pretty much a liveaboard boat for at least a year because that's what, it would take me a year or a year and a half or maybe even longer to do the Great Loop because I like to travel and meet people and see the sights. And, of course, when you get down near New Orleans, I'm going to want all the different shrimp dish you can find in, Flo in Florida, all the lobster. Hey, I'm from Maine, so I can't help it. I'm a lobster fanatic. So there's a lot to be considered there. So i got to look at the hulls and the width of the hull. Uh, I wanted it kind of way too wide for right now. And it's like, well, yeah, this narrow hulls are a lot better, but do I really want a narrow hull? Which made me start thinking, is this really the right path for me? So I got a lot of thinking to do. Um, let's see, we spoke about having as little drag as possible. And I didn't realize, but here's a good point, okay? Sailboats have a lot less drag than your regular uh, power boat because a sailboat the back end is kind of swooped up and that makes sense so swooped up you're not having as much drag in the water where boats like my puddle jumper okay they need a lot bigger motor because it is kind of a square back so there's going to be more drag to it that's why a lot of these uh, 
bigger displacement hull, uh, you know, the ones that just go 10 miles an hour, you could probably get by with a small diesel of 40 horsepower. Whereas with mine, I'm going to be looking at, I guess, 100 to 125 horsepower as an average to get the thing moving. Something else I didn't consider. Okay, so the hull shape. And of course, when we spoke about that, I started mentioning to him, well, you know, there's the catamaran, what's going to be better, a catamaran or a monohull and a monohull is great but i think a catamaran since they're skinnier you know display the skinnier uh hulls and there's two of them it's going to be better for you know electric and this and that and it's funny because he just finished he gave me a comparison he's done comparisons on this he just finished up with a what he said a 44 foot cat i believe uh which he finished building and this is uh electric versus a similar length monohull and he says you know there really isn't that much difference after the whole thing is done you know i mean who knows what you want to put into it but a catamaran versus a mon monohull you're not going to really get that much difference in the speed all things considered you know the same same versus same with batteries and motor and all that and another thing i'm thinking well what a catamaran or you have so much more space you got both the hulls and I hadn't also considered what well, a catamaran, most of your living space is going to be above, I guess you could say above water line, because in those hulls, you're, they're going to be filled up with your uh, containers for gray water, for clear water, uh, for all the batteries, because you're going to need a lot of batteries, uh, and all the other different things you're going to need you know, for this boat. So they're all going to be taking up most of the pontoon so there's not going to really be a lot more room down there so again you're having all your living space above the same as you would with a monohull right <laughs> so again the more we spoke the more i understand so rather than having him come and do a video i figured hey why don't i just take what i learned from him and instead of showing you okay i need some homework <laughs> Uh, I can just take a lot of this information in case anyone else is thinking like me and share it with you folks. Let's see, what else did we go to? Uh, well, again, we kept, kept on coming back to how important it is to know what your end result is. What do you want to see? What's your goal project? Now, I had a goal project of what I wanted, but what do I want it for? Am I going to be out at sea all the time? Am I going to be living on this thing 24-7 all the time? When I'm on the loop, I would be. But normally, how often am I actually going to use that? When I'm living here at home, am I going to be, even if it's trailerable, am I going to be taking it every week out in the water? Or is it going to turn out to be once a month? Or, you know, because that's a big boat. And I imagine it's quite a bit, you know, a bit of work to get it out there. And if I just want to go out fishing... I'm taking the puddle jumper, okay, because that'll be done hopefully the end of this year, beginning of next. Right now it's go. Cool. By the way, let me get to that subject. <laughs> uh, well, nah, I'll save that after. I want to talk about the puddle jumper where it's at later on. Uh, so I can use that. So I don't need this big thing to go out all the time. So what's the end result? How much am I really going to be using it? Now, the reason it's important to know is because if I'm looking – Am I building it because electric, because I want to save money? Am I looking at it because uh, the overall, the worth of the vessel after, if I want to sell it? Well, at my age, I'm not looking at really selling it. I'm looking at keeping it, and I'll probably hand it down to my kids. But am I looking at living on it? Well, <laughs> I could say yes, but Raluca's going to yell at me and say no, because <laughs> she wants you know, to live in a mansion somewhere. Hey, we're working towards it. But uh, so we're probably not going to really be living in it. I'll be using it for short trips here to there, maybe going from Maine to Boston or Maine to New York, maybe once a year to Florida or something like that, but not really living on it. But he mentioned that when you're going electric, it's similar to buying about 10 years of fuel up front. So think of that. It's a big investment right now. You're getting all your, you know, by getting all the things, the panels and the batteries and everything, you're buying all your fuel up front. And no, you're not going to have to, you know, it's going to be cheaper as you're going later on, but it is a major investment. And if I'm not going to use it all the time, why not just get a couple uh, small diesel motors and it's going to be a lot less expensive up front than getting everything. And it won't cost that much to use. So if I'm not using it a lot, 
the diesel will be fine. Even when I go on the loop, if I'm traveling just a little bit and just going, you know, a few miles and staying overnight and a few miles and staying overnight, you know, you're spreading it out. It's not like you're spending thousands of dollars in a week. You're spending thousands of dollars for fuel in a year. Okay, But uh, afterwards, you know, it might be more cost effective. So those are other things to think about. And with the diesel, of course, it'll go a little faster. It'll work better on bad days, bad weather days, and I could have my wider boat, have my comfort, and, you know, so have my boat need it too, not cake, have my cake you need it too, but you can figure something out there, so, kind of, okay, so comparing the fuel for 10 years, is it really worth the added expense over, you know, having the motors or something, so it kind of makes you think, so those are the kind of things we spoke about, you said he'd be glad to do an interview with me, but, um, I think he was kind of, you know, he was being sensitive to not making me feel bad while I'm on the camera saying, I can't do anything I want to do. <laughs> I, I know he would have felt bad too. So, but anyways, Sam, if you're watching, thanks a lot. You helped open my eyes and no, I'm not, I haven't decided what I want to do. I've got a lot of thinking to do and hopefully all the people watching here and that are seeing this in the future, you can give me your ideas. I'm already looking at other possibilities for boats. So now that I've spoken, spoken about the whole Sam conversation and I want to thank you guys a lot. Um, I actually have bought some study plans from Sam in the past um, and I'll be looking there quite you know, a lot more once I decide what I want to do and uh, at his plans and also for probably more advice because the guy's right on the ball. So that kind of gets me in a new direction. Where do I want to go? What am I going to do? Well, I've been looking at other boats and I still have my dream. Uh, no one can sink my dream. A couple have tried, but it hasn't worked. Okay, <laughs> I still have my dream boat project. What's it going to be? I don't know. It's going to be big. It's going to be grand because in my other job where I help people with goals and I work with the mind a lot, uh, I always tell people when you choose a goal, the goal needs to be exciting. It needs to solicit uh, or elicit emotion. If you're not emotional about it and excited about it, it's not big enough. So when you make a goal, it needs to be big enough that it might even be a little scary. Scary to the point where can I do it? But hey, you know, the old thing, you shoot for the stars, you'll get the moon, right? So I want it to be something nice, something big, something bold, something that will be exciting to build and even more exciting to be going out on. So I've been looking again still at catamarans at monohulls i've even been looking at houseboats i found one the other day from uh, i think it was from caston marine i believe but it was an an old and it was an old plans for a houseboat and it was on kind of pontoons kind of it was a homemade thing uh, it looked really interesting but it was ocean worthy oh but being a houseboat that's big how much is it going to cost to move the thing so i got to look into all that kind of stuff but that's kind of, if I'm going to be going someplace, I want to be comfortable. So why not have a houseboat or something big enough, almost like that? And I've seen some, Glen L has some great options. Uh, so there's a lot of options out there and you folks can give me your options uh, as well. So that's my new direction is moving towards that, uh, looking at, you know, what the next bill is going to be. Um, and as for my build <laughs> right now, hey folks, it's been cold in Maine. Uh, this morning it was two degrees. <laughs> two degrees. That's when you take a, a bucket of water and you go to throw it at your partner and it freezes before it hits them. And Oh, that hurts. You know that? But don't try it. Uh, it's been cold out there, you know. Um, and the problem is my garage where I'm building the boat is not a heated garage. It gets some heat from uh, another part of the building going in there, but it's so far out. Uh with my heater on all day long, all night long, I can get it up to probably 45 and 50 when it's this cold, but it's not warm enough to be able to use the epoxy resin. So I can't finish resining underneath the darn thing. So as soon as it warms up a bit, uh, I heard that we're probably gonna be having some days here in the next few weeks, uh, maybe down into the 30s. 
So if it gets to the 30s or the 40s, I'll probably be able to heat it up. So that's what we're waiting on right now is uh, the, the cold weather. It's been, like I said, between, I think last week it was like 7 below. So it's been between that, but usually in the 10s and 20s. Every morning, though, it's single digits. Uh, I just got some new tires on my car because every day I had to fill up the old ones with air because it gets so cold, they kept on going low, going low. Today it's the front left. Tomorrow it's the front right. The next day it's, <laughs> so we've been having to fill them up every single day. So new tires are great. We don't have to do that. So that's where that's been going. So in the meantime, what am I going to do? I'm going to come on live. I'm gonna, so I'm going to try to go back to doing a video each week. And I'd like to come on live and let you folks know. So if you see that I'm coming on live, come on in and say hey. And I don't know when I'm going to go live. So go ahead and subscribe below and hit that bell so you'll be notified. Hey, he's coming on live. And I'll do like I did right here is put like a five-minute timer so you'll have time to come on. And uh, for those of you that, like I said earlier, that have built boats or are building boats or have some great information, let me know. Go ahead and leave a note in the comments below and how I can get a hold of you because I'd really like to speak to some of you about your boat build, about how the fun you've had doing it and the, the snags and the, you know, the high hopes and the lows. And, <laughs> and if you've already built it, what you've been doing with it. I think it'd be a lot of fun to share information. So go ahead and do that right down there. Can you see there's a comment on our wait? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so with that, I want to thank you folks all for being so supportive. And I really look forward to meeting some of you in the future when I am finally mobile on my um, great loop with the big one or maybe even fishing if you come up to Maine in the summertime there's some nice stripers out there and uh, some lobsters but we can't really go get them unless you have a lobster trap but I'll be building some of those in the spring as well when it gets warmer so I can get outside and do them uh, be neat to have your own lobster traps wouldn't it <laughs> throw them out go fishing come back grab the lobsters have a great dinner so that's what's going on so with that once again I thank you all. I hope you have all a wonderful and prosperous 2022, and I will see you in the next video. Y'all take care now. Bye-bye.